The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And guess what, folks? We got positive prices yet again. Quite a buy of the dip, whether it was Monday's action that we saw the acceleration of 42.93. Tuesday, we saw action as well. Putting this on a 15-minute chart, we'll jump right into it on the S&Ps. You're talking about a price level Tuesday afternoon, I guess we'll call it 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're trading at 43.20. You just traded up 100 points from Tuesday afternoon, folks. We got a lot of 100-point moves in here. You had a 100-point move from the lows of Monday to the overnight action on Tuesday. Then you trade down from 43.96, about 75 points to the lows at 8 p.m. Tuesday evening. And since then, you climb up 100 points. Quite an acceleration yesterday. You saw some volatility at the 2 p.m. announcement, the volatility continued on the 2.30 p.m. press conference. We end the day higher, and nonetheless, we charge higher overnight as well. You see the accelerations we got, whether it was at about 2.30 in the morning. We got another acceleration at 3.30. We make highs in the markets at about 5 a.m. Eastern time. And a little bit of negative action in the last few minutes. We're trading right at 4,400 on the dot. We're up about a third of a percent in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, a little bit of sell-off in the last 15, 30 minutes or so. We make it to 15,300. You're talking about 500 points from the lows we had on Tuesday. You're currently up about a tenth of a percent. You get the Dow up more than half a percent right now. 34,310 in the Russell, positive by 11 points this morning, trading at 2226. Bitcoin's had some volatility. We almost make it to 40,000 earlier in the week. We're trading at 43,450. You got crude hanging tough. Look at that acceleration. Crude up to 7,250 overnight. We're trading at 7,228. We were just trading at 69.39 on Tuesday. You're talking about almost a $3 move to the upside on crude. Now you take a look at crude on the daily. You're talking about the higher boundary line of about $75 is where we were early in July for highs in that crude contract. Back to the short-term charts, we got gold selling off today. Gold's off $23 right now. You see the volatility on the Fed announcement yesterday. Gold trading from $17.75 just at $8.15 this morning. Quite an acceleration over the last hour to the downside on gold, down $20 from that price point. Silver right now down $0.34 cents at $22.56, and we jumped to notes and bonds. We're getting a little bit of lower price and higher yield. You got the 10-year right now. We're coming down to right where we were last Friday. Be an interesting area. We take a look at it on the daily. You see the move that we're at. Uh, again, kind of matching up to where we were last Friday. But, man, you keep accelerating lower. It seems like the lower boundary line in that consolidation area is at about 131.20. That's a full point lower than from where we're trading at right now. You don't have to go back that far on the 10-year. Just August 4th, so you're going back about six or seven weeks. You were at a price point of 135.14. Folks, that's almost three full points that we've given up in the 10-year when you talk about where we are. Uh, on that yield, and that's correlating. The 10-year yield correlating right now to 1.37% as we're getting some rising yields. Be interesting to see how that hits all the markets today, especially the NASDAQ 100, the weakest of the indices so far. As you're up, up about two-tenths of percent, you got the S&Ps up four-tenths, the Dow up six tenths right now, and the Russell up six tenths as well. So maybe those higher yields going to weigh on some of those FANG stocks as we look for the open this morning. All right, what else we have in terms of economic data this morning? We got weekly jobless claims. That number coming in a little bit hot than what we were looking for. Uh, 351,000 initial unemployment claims for state programs. Uh, that's the week ended September 18th. The median estimate was looking for 320 on that chart. A little bit of an uptick, but when you talk about where we are in terms of 30,000 jobs, uh, not a big miss on that number at all. Continuing claims increased to 2.8 million for the week ended September 11th. Continuing claims, remember, one week delayed versus initial unemployment claims. Uh, and yes, yeah, so that number out at 8.30 this morning. California saw claims rise by 24,000. Virginia saw an increase of 
12,000, by far the biggest increase last week. Louisiana saw the biggest decrease as the state recovers from Hurricane Ida. A lot of influences and variables going on there in a big way. Uh, jumping over to the Fed. So Chairman Powell yesterday, a little bit of volatility in both directions. Nothing too surprising here. Uh, tapering may begin at their next meeting, which is going to be in early November, November 2nd and 3rd. Let's get it up on the calendar here. Uh, there's October. Yeah, November 2nd and 3rd. First week of November, you got a meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday to kick off November trading. And they talk about, so this is the bond and asset purchases. I'm sure we're all listening to it yesterday, but it'll be interesting to see how the anticipation comes into November, how the market reacts once they actually do start tapering. And it's going to probably be a gradual process that will take them through the middle of 2022. There's your process. Uh, November and complete the process by mid-2022. Powell explaining the U.S. Central Bank's first steps toward Excuse me one second. Uh, toward withdrawing emergency pandemic support for the economy, told reporters Wednesday that tapering could come as soon as the next meeting. Now, we have tapering. That's going to be happening. It's going to be happening from November through the middle of 2022. You might see about an eight-month schedule. Uh, the market had talked about that we had might have seen that schedule come out on this meeting that we just had. So not quite too accelerated, as in that was one possible outcome yesterday, is that they would have actually given you that schedule. Now, uh, they potentially may give us that schedule in November, although, and there's the caveat, uh, he left the door open to waiting longer if needed and stressed that tapering was not meant to start a countdown to lift off from zero interest rates. He's trying to uh, separate the two. The timing and the pace of the coming reduction in asset purchases will not be intended to carry a direct signal regarding the timing of interest rate liftoff. Always interesting trying to dissect uh, what the Fed is trying to do there. Is that a message from the markets to calm them as they try and raise interest rates in the coming year or two? Or is that just the straight out truth that they are two separate actions that are not intertwined in any way and do not take the fact that they are going to be tapering their bond and asset purchases uh, as a signal that interest rate liftoff will be coming? That's the message that he's putting out there. Uh, said he didn't expect the Fed to begin rate increases until after completing the tap taper process, which would wrap up sometime around the middle of next year. So what you get out of that is they're not going to be happening at the same time, probably. Okay, that's what he's putting there. It's a bit faster than the last cycle. That's TD Securities Chief U.S. Macro Strategist Jim O'Sullivan saying. He was very clear in the press conference that soon means November. So look for that schedule in November. Look for it to begin. Look for interest rates to stay where they are at least while that tapering proceeds. Uh, the Fed took 10 months to complete the exercise of scaling back bond buying back in 2014. Uh, 10 months would bring us eight months into the middle of 2022. The middle of 2022 obviously has some wiggle room, but if you actually pin it right to the middle, then you're talking about potentially an eight-month taper process in there for the Fed. When you look at the dot plots, a slight adjustment that uh, could point to potentially raising the Fed funds rate as soon as next year, according to the median estimates of FOMC participants. In June, the median projection indicated no increases in 2023. So a slight uptick there. But man, 2023, folks, we got a long way to go. Uh, they're going to have a lot more economic data that's going to be shaping those decisions by that time, much more so than we have right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back talking to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, TFNN, 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps positive by 16 points right now. We have the Dow up 190, the NASDAQ 100 up 33. All the markets in positive territory as we kick off Thursday trading. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, fast market at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, trade management, rolling, defined risk. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, this is an interesting day we have setting up here today, at least to start, at least as we uh, start the day, it is certainly risk on. You've got the dollar down, you've got bonds and notes down, you've got gold actually down along with the dollar, you've got the VIX down, you've got Bitcoin slightly higher. Um, so far, th this market looks pretty firm, Tommy. I'm watching for the 4413 level on the e-mini that is last friday's close tommy I mean, that'll wipe out the whole week of losses if we get back to 44 13 we've already been there this morning but uh backing off a little bit here pre-open it is remarkable kevin i just put up here to stretch back some of the chart i got an hourly chart but i just want to kind of go to back it's it's great you brought it up man to to the volatility we've had since kind of the end of last week uh you saw that huge acceleration on friday really monday upside kevin in the s and p's if you count the lows of monday 42.93 we make it to a price point of 4395 by tuesday at four in the morning you trade back down to about 43.20 and just in the market session, we had another 100-point run from late Tuesday, call it 9 p.m. Eastern time, the lows after market. Um, these are some big bids, some big dip buy-in, as they would say. We're sitting at 4,400. Pretty remarkable that you could wipe out the entire run we had from Monday's trading when it looked like markets were going to fall out of bed and never catch a bid again, Kevin. As we know, that's not the case always. Well, I mean, you know, the problems in China seem to be dissipating. They're not out of the woods yet, but they seem to be... Uh, coming off the catastrophic levels that were uh, rumored on Monday. And Jerome Powell did his normal calming of the markets and portraying the best possible version of the market. He talked about tapering. He talked about it's coming soon. He talked about it will probably be done by mid-next year. But he's not ready to start doing it yet till he sees 
the resolution of the semiconductor problem and the resolution of the 10.9 million open jobs and the 7.5 million um, people coming back off of enhanced benefits. So I think he needs to see a little more resolution before he's willing to start taking his foot off the gas pedal. Now, Tommy, I think Jerome Powell is a pretty good student of history. And what do I mean by that is the two mistakes that were made in previous economic downturns was not enough liquidity at the beginning. He's done that, right? There was plenty of liquidity in the market when when this pandemic started. And then the other big mistake is at the end, cutting it off too early, right? Raising interest rates, cutting off the expansion too early. And that's what I think he's focused on not doing right now, Tommy. I would agree, man. And it's pretty cool how they talk about uh, they're going to taper the bond purchases, at asset purchases. Uh, I think he said he doesn't really want them to coincide with any type of rise in interest rates. So right away, you're probably going to push that back and everything's in flux. But you're probably going to push that back, like you said, to at least the middle of 2022, if that's where they go with the bond and the asset purchases. So then we're pushing back almost a full year, Kevin, where it's even gonna be discussed where interest rates rise. And it's so remarkable in terms of trying to make a decision off of where the economy and the jobs and, and everything we talk about when we talk to you um, at 9.15 in the morning, man, in terms of there's so much up in the air, Kevin, of where we'll be at that time that to even say at a minimum is kind of how I look at it right now, if Chairman Powell's still gonna be chairman, which indications look like he will, it seems like they're going to be stuck there in terms of low interest rates, at least until that time. And then it's up to where we are then. And it's like, man, if, if we're still struggling, then they're going to have the ammunition, I think, to keep them pretty low. It just seems like they're going to be low for a while, man. And that's what I'm that's what I got. And it seems like that's what the market's getting out here as well. Well, I mean, the, certainly that his rhetoric says that he's not going to cut this rally off early. You know, he is he is. You know, he doesn't mind. They've been trying. If you think about it, Tommy, the Fed has been trying to get inflation to 2% or above for how many years yeah. that they failed. He's got it up there now, and he's he's committed to let it stay or settle up at or near 2% going forward. So, you know, no matter how it got there, he's trying to keep it so this market stays at a good level of growth. And I think that is what he doesn't want to, um, you know, put in peril as this market uh, unleashes, because you're going to have a lot of things like, you know, the, a lot of the headlines are all these ships out in the ports of Miami, ports of Long Beach in Los Angeles. Well, if a flood of workers start coming back into these jobs, that should, that bottleneck should release. A bunch of goods on the market, a bunch of uh, supplies, and then uh, all the all the labor shortages. Well, if all these people come back to the labor force, that's going to be a good thing. If we start getting chips that I'm sure they've been manufacturing over the last several months, that should flood chips and cars and autos back into the market. So I just think there's a big unleashing, unwinding of all these bottleneck problems that are hopefully in our near future, Tommy. Yeah, and it seems like eventually they'll work their way out. Uh, it's probably a question of like how long that takes, not if it happens. And uh, it's persisted a little bit longer than some have talked about. I mean, those chips, I saw something about today that car companies might miss out on 200 and something billion dollars in sales for the chip problem that they're having. Um, some staggering numbers out there, man. So we got markets in positive territory, Kevin. Gold pulling back, as you said. We got a weekly jobless, uh, initial jobless claims number today. Uh, pretty close to in line, 350,000. We got some misses of 30,000 or so, but that number seems to have settled in between about three to 400,000 right now. Uh, we got some earnings going on. Darden was out with their numbers, strong numbers. Darden trading higher today uh, as they proceed to uh, just deliver in a big way up to 157. What are you guys going to be talking about on the program coming up at 11 o'clock today, Kevin? We're getting to the end of earnings, Tommy, and you know what signals it? Nike. Nike and Costco uh, after the bell today, that signals really the unofficial end of earnings season. So we'll trade Nike, we'll trade Costco, and uh, off we go, Tommy. 
you know, Nike, that's quite a story. My dad's been talking about Nike a lot. This pullback Nike's had, man, from 174, we were just touching. What was that low we had a couple days ago? 152, yeah, 152.32, little bit of a bounce up to 157. Uh, and Costco, really interesting. Uh, I'm a Sam's member, Kevin, pretty close. But, man, this run that Costco has had from 307 in March to 469 just recently. We're trading at 452. Uh, remarkable as the world has changed, and some of those companies have greatly benefited from the trends that we have changed in our personal lives. Uh, I love stocking up now, man. I've said to people, there's no reason that you don't have, you know, water, Kevin. That was the one that compounded me the most. We're in Florida, right? We're dealing with hurricane season right now. Um, one thing I said is, you know, people should have water stocked up, man. All that stuff that kind of happened in the in the beginning of the pandemic, it kind of showed everybody saying, hey, we take for granted a lot in our life, man. Um, and so people stocking up in a big way. And I imagine that's a trend that's going to continue to some degree. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the show as always, man. We'll be listening at 11 o'clock today. We appreciate the conversation and the education as always, man. You have a great one. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. My pleasure, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in every trading day at 11 o'clock. You heard it. They're going to be talking Nike and Costco for their earnings today. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We get markets open and we get the S&Ps up 18 points. All the markets in positive territory. Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100 up a quarter percent at 15,201. Get the Dow up two thirds percent, up almost seven tenths in the green, 34,360 in the Russell, up about 10 points. It is remarkable. You put it on a daily, right? There's your Russell. Talk about a consolidation. Talk about well-defined. We're going back to February of this year, folks. The Russell's been chopping around between about 2100 and 2350, somewhat near the middle of that range right now. You take a look at the Dow dipping below that trend line, far below it. Now we're at 34,370, about 1,200 points away from the all-time highs. S&Ps, whoops, excuse me. There's my S&Ps trading at 4405. Now I'm going to put this on a 30 minute 10 day to see the run that Kevin was talking about. Now it would be really remarkable, folks, if you got it all back to Friday. Um, just getting back the action from where we were at the Friday close, right? would be quite an achievement when you look at the devastation that we had going on on Monday. I mean, taking a look at the NASDAQ, folks, you had the Qs. I mean, let's take a look at the Qs for a second. All right, you had the Qs down $12 from Friday's close, and we just got it all back almost. You did get it back, basically, on the pre-market when the Qs hit a high of one, excuse me, 372 26 right now trading 371 remarkable how some of those growth companies move as the multiples of that growth is uh kind of recalculated sometimes as the market it's a little volatile jump it over to the vix right now under 20 yet again vix and it's remarkable i remember talking to kevin hinks i believe it was monday uh excuse me tuesday after the monday devastation vix was at 2879 you know i'm saying to kevin hinks how do you trade an option environment when you have volatility that high, yet you have markets moving that dramatically. Well, guess what, folks? It did not last. If you were selling volatility premium, especially if you were selling it with a bullish bias in the market, man, talk about a pullback pretty quickly from 25 on the VIX on Tuesday morning. It's Thursday morning, not even 40 hours later, and we're back under 20 at 1962 in that VIX. All right, let's jump around to some of the stories I got up here. I talked about it with Kevin Hinks. Worsening chip woes to cost automakers $210 billion in sales. There you go. The cost of intractable semiconductor shortage has ballooned by more than 90%, pushing the total hit to 2021 revenue. Folks, that's this year's revenue for the world's automakers to almost a quarter trillion dollars. It's almost difficult to grasp the amount of in, um, impact in the auto industry. That's the latest dire forecast from uh, Alex Partners, which predicts global automakers will build 7.7 .7 million fewer vehicles due to the chip crisis. That's almost double what they were looking for on their previous estimate in terms of missing out on 3.9 million vehicles. They're now up to almost 8 million fewer vehicles as a result of that chip crisis. Despite ongoing efforts to shore up the supply chain, semiconductor availability has worsened as automakers exhaust stockpiles and other industries have no none to spare. Uh, yeah, the barrel's empty. There's nothing left to scrape. That's how they're putting it. Just staggering numbers at the top end there when you're talking about $210 billion. Uh, as inventory on the dealer's lots has dwindled, car prices have skyrocketed. You're talking about, how about 43,300 in the U.S. in August. That's a record. Uh, supply is so constrained, some dealers have resorted to renting cars so they have something to display in their showrooms. Uh, uh, this is going to take some time to sort out, folks. This is the third estimate uh, that they, they've issued this year on the financial impact of the shortage. It began in January saying it's going to be $61 billion. They lifted that in May to $110 billion, and now they've doubled it again. So look at that. I mean, in January, they had $61 billion. Okay, they doubled that estimate almost in May. Double would have been $120. They come in at $110, and they doubled it almost again now up to 210 from 110. Uh, they can't guarantee there won't be further upward adjustments to the forecast given the myriad of uncertainties. Well, that's just plain English, of course. Uh, but man, watch out in that chip sector because you know it's tough to play catch up when everybody wants so many chips that you can barely supply what you have going on, let alone catching up to demand that is sitting there waiting to be caught up to. All right, jumping over to buy in the dip, JP Morgan. They're talking about flows show the buy the dip mantra is at risk. Blasphemy out there, folks. My goodness, buying the dip is at risk. Don't tell me that. I kid. Uh, but some of the numbers they talk about in here. So how about on Monday? I believe that's going to be Monday the 20th, correct? Yes, it is. Monday. $11 billion from equity ETFs 
exchange traded funds. You had an $11 billion outflow of equity exchange traded funds on September 20th. That's the biggest on a down day this year outside of quarterly options and futures expiration. Uh, they put rather concerning is the quote there because it's inconsistent with the buy the dip behavior that's helped propel equities higher for months. JP Morgan strategist. Geez, what's, can I can I nail that name? I don't think so. Nicholas Pana. Jeez, I'm not even going to try. That's a tough one. I'll have to look that one up for that gentleman. Uh, observing flows for signs that this change in behavior would prove more persistent is important in the coming days. Adding that an inflow on September 21st of two billion was rather muted. So you get 11 billion pulled out on Monday. You do have dip buying but you're only getting a two billion addition on the 21st now taking a look at the 21st okay there is the 21st on tuesday not really a huge dip buying effort there i mean the dip buying really accelerated kind of tuesday night yes you got the acceleration into the close i mean look at monday's action right it really started about three o'clock that you got some buying kind of saved itself there it doesn't look like much on this chart folks but man you're talking about at three o'clock you had a low at 42.94 and by the time we came into the close, you were trading at almost 43.50. That's almost a 60-point pop in the S&P to end Monday action. And then really the run begins. Like I said, we've had two 100-point runs, folks, in this market. So you got the 100-point run from Monday to the highs of Monday. You have another 100-point run from the highs, excuse me, the lows of Tuesday to the high we just had pre-market right now. You, all the markets catching a little bit of a bid with the S&Ps up 28 points right now. Remarkable action in a big way. All right, let's jump down to some of the stocks that are moving with their own news this morning. We talked about Darden Restaurants. They beat on earnings, a buck 76 versus a buck 64. Same store sales. And I don't like same store sales versus a year ago because it's not really fair. 47.5% nonetheless. Darden, though, trading higher in a big way, up 7.5% on that stock. And take a look at that weekly, folks. It has been a rocket ship since the bottom of $26 in COVID. You came into 2020 at a price point of 110. And there's a nice weekly acceleration. I believe that's going to be. Is that all-time highs? I think it is. There you go. We're talking about all-time highs in Darden restaurants there. And they do <coughs> have... Uh, Seasons 52, uh, kind of like a healthy menu of food, yet a high-end restaurant. They serve wine. They have a nice atmosphere, yet they've tailored the menu to healthy eating. I remember the first time I saw one of those restaurants in Tampa. Uh, I said, this is a brilliant concept. You know, you have high-end dining with the focus on healthy eating. At first, Seasons 52, they, I think every meal they did was 475 calories or less. And I remember sitting at the bar, talking to the bartender, and said, how do they do this, man? Because some of those meals consist of a filet with mashed potatoes and veggies. Well, the key was, folks, no milk and no cream. That was how they did it. Uh, still delicious food. If you ever get a chance, check it out in a big way. All right, we'll go jump down the line, folks. We got other stocks moving this morning. We got Salesforce trading higher. We're going to take a look at some of those equities when we get back. We got the markets accelerating higher as well. S&P's up 33 points. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And man, we got a positive market. Talk about dip buying. Look at that acceleration in the S&Ps right now, right out of the gate. Let's put it on a five minute to see that acceleration in even greater display from 9 a.m. We're trading at 43.95. We're pushing the highs of pre-market at 44.22. Right now, let's jump around to some of the equities that are moving today. You have Salesforce. I believe they got an upgrade today. They're up 4.2%. No, no, excuse me. They uh, revised their outlook. Let me get this up to do. Raised their full year 2022 revenue guidance uh, higher than the company's previous estimates. Uh, so raising their guidance for Salesforce, they are higher. Oh, uh, Roku was the one that received an upgrade. They are higher as well. Roku right now trading up 3.3% as well at 335. And I'm going to jump over to a Bloomberg opinion piece. Okay, it's an opinion piece, folks, but I tend to agree with it. And it's written by an O'Brien. So why not? Timothy O'Brien, not familiar. Uh, Disney built a new magic kingdom in sports betting. The company may be wagering that the line between football and gambling will inevitably be erased. That's already happening, folks. It's done. Disney's going to be there. They're one of the reasons why I'm a Disney bull as well. You have the strongest sports brand in the world in ESPN probably. Imagine when you have an ESPN sports betting app that has all of the content. You're able to bet in it. The lines are shown. That's where the future is going, folks. It is. Florida's trying to pass sports betting right now the amount of money that the states are able to get from that happening um and it's a long time coming folks if you wanted to bet on sports there's bookies that have been everywhere man we're from, we're from boston you want to talk about bookies in boston um so it makes sense. They legalize it, they regulate it, and the states make the money from it. Uh, all they've talked about so far was potentially maybe licensing the deals. They've currently already done it. But one of the things that they said yesterday or this week when you had the CEO out there of Disney, uh, Bob Chapik, he talked about that there were going to be some woes that they had to proceed with in terms of not quite the growth they were looking for this quarter on Disney+. Plus. But one of the things they said is that they're ready, really, to step into uh, the gambling side of things. And the potential over there is endless, folks. I mean, taking a look at some of these companies that have been in gambling, you want to take a look at some some rises and falls in terms of the volatility potential. Penn National, they're the ones that own Barstool Sports as well. You start off 2020 at about $22. You rise to 142 Market got a little bit ahead of itself in a big way. You're back to 75 but some of these companies, folks, in a big way, and I think MGM has their gambling going in a big way. They have a lot more going than that, of course, uh, but trading higher as well. And then the other one I wanted to talk about real quick is Canopy Growth. 
Now, some of these cannabis stocks, um, maybe this is where we start to catch a bid. Looks like nothing on this chart because, man, it's been a max pain situation. Uh, Reddit got involved early in the year, pushed this thing up to 56.50. Remarkable that we give it all back folks from the run we had in october you have a low there this is a weekly of 1410 okay the weekly we're just dealing with right now is 1335 we're back at 1472 the last couple days we finally caught a little bit of a bid all right look at yesterday's action we're trading 1360 today we're up another four percent put that on your radar folks if you're looking for long term might be a nice area to step into that uh not often that you get the type of opportunity to get it all back in terms of the run we've had now that's a three-year weekly let's go back five years i mean look at this we're almost going back to two full runs, right? Remarkable. Uh, let alone almost three full runs in some of these stocks. But nonetheless, you give it all back, and we're right back out to this breakout area, folks, that we had from October of last year. Be interesting to see if we trade even below that. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to trade to the COVID lows of $9 on this equity. But, man, we are close. But we're seeing a little bit of strength for the first time in some of those cannabis equities uh, right out of the gate yesterday in a big way, trading higher and trading higher, extending those gains today, up 4.3% for Canopy. All right, jumping around to some of the other stocks that we talk about moving. Uh, we talked about Salesforce. We talked about Roku and Darden. BlackBerry out with their numbers. Uh better than expected let's see how they're trading blackberry good old blackberry trying to reinvent themselves there you go they're up 10 percent today take a look at this chart on a daily yeah be careful of this one right talk about some some accelerations and some give backs this is just going back a year folks early in the year you spiked to 28.77 later in the year you spiked to 20 now we've had some reddit runs in here always possible you're up a 10 percent today on their numbers uh, but man they have a long way to go to kind of rejuvenate that company. Reported a loss of six cents a share. Market was looking for a loss of seven cents. Revenue, 175 million. Market was looking for 164 million. Uh, they got a long way to go, as I said. Now, speaking of giving it all back, I'm gonna jump down to Biogen real quick. I was looking at this earlier, okay? B-I-I-B, -I -I -B, Biogen. Uh, I'm gonna put this on a three-year weekly to see the run. Now, Biogen gets an upgrade today. Let's see. Uh, let's see. The stock rose. No, Needham initiated coverage of the stock with a buy rating, saying in a note to clients that the company's controversial Alzheimer's drug will be a big seller for the company in the long term. There's been controversy surrounding this drug, to say the least. But which is what is remarkable is you've given it almost all back from when they got that ruling approving it. You ended the week prior at 291. About you had a high of 291. And just like that, we're trading at 296. Obviously, 468, probably not a fair price. We put it on a daily. But man, this thing was above 400 for a week or two before you really started to give it up. We've seen another give up. So they get an upgrade. If you're looking long term, that may be an avenue. Uh, you know, can't can't argue with getting a price under 300 after this thing has skyrocketed, especially when you look at this chart, because 300 on this chart seems pretty fair considered to some of the volatility that we've seen all revolving around this drug in particular. And man, this market, it just does not stop, folks. We got to jump back to the S&Ps because we are getting it all back just like that. Markets above the pre-market high. And just like that, folks, forget Monday ever happened because we've gotten it all back by Thursday at 949 in the morning. This market is relentless, is the term look at the dow getting it all back dow 34,532 you're up more than a thousand points from the lows of monday nasdaq 15,268 let's take a look at some of the commodities as gold trading lower down 26 dollars right now we'll jump to notes and bonds kind of hanging out where we started the show the 10-year negative by about 10 ticks right now all right let's jump down the line to some of the other companies we got uh, I want to talk about KB Homes. They were trading higher in the pre-market. Let's see if they're holding on to those gains. They had quarterly earnings of buck sixty on revenue of one point four seven million. The market was looking for a buck sixty two on revenue of one point five seven. Interesting. They were trading lower, uh, higher though pre-market on both of those, and there it is, trading up three percent. So they got more going on um, than their numbers. There's the acceleration on you know, kind of a miss. Uh, maybe they got some outlook in there as KB Homes trading higher this morning, up about 3% on their numbers last night. And let's jump around to some of the stocks that I like out there. Disney, speaking of, up 1.2%. They fall out of bed on Tuesday on the announcement from their CEO that their numbers coming up. Excuse me, folks. Uh, Going to miss kind of on subscriber growth and, and what they're looking for. But Disney back to 175.77 right now. 
excuse me, grab a little water. We'll jump to Uber, which had quite an acceleration to the upside on Tuesday. And Uber up another percent today uh, with the market on their numbers. All right, folks, we got the S&P up 45. Stay tuned. I'll be right back in three minutes as we look to finish up the show. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, and talk about strength in the market. We are the S&Ps up 1.1% right now. Tr folks, you're up 46 points, trading at 44.29. You are 137 points above the lows that we had on Monday. You get the NASDAQ 100 charging higher as well, up 8 tenths percent. You could say the NASDAQ is lagging, even up 8 tenths percent. The Dow is up 1.2% right now. The Russell up more than a full percent as well let's jump over to the vix as we get a positive market the vix now under 19 we're at 1878 we give it all back from friday's action man if you're trading that vix and you're fortunate to get any of these runs that we got like we got on monday folks or even like we got on friday excuse me on friday 
you got to be willing to take money off the table in some of those trades because the VIX just gives it up just like that no matter how high it goes. Uh, you take a look at the VIX on a weekly. Uh, let's put it back on a five-year daily and just zoom in on the action we've had to some of those highs. Those spikes do not last long, but man, this one really gave it back quickly, back to 1879 on the volatility index. We'll jump to some of the commodities. Gold continuing the slide to negative prices right now with gold. 1751, the lows of Sunday night, 1742 on that gold contract. And we're talking about a yield right now correlating to 1.37%. Over in Europe right now, Positive prices, the DAX up a percent, CAC Carole up 1.1 over in Asia, Nikkei down two-thirds percent, Shanghai up four-tenths, Hang Seng up 1.2 percent right now. And let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we wrap it up. You got Amazon up four-tenths percent so far, Apple shares up four-tenths percent as well, Microsoft shares jumping around up about two-tenths percent. And we'll jump to Tesla as we finish up the program with Tesla shares catching a bid up about a third of a percent as well. All right, folks, should be an interesting day in the market. Stay tuned. we got to replay this hour, but it's Basil. He did his program live, folks, at 8 a.m. this morning. So you're going to see him coming up right now at 10 o'clock. Of course, we got Fast Market at 11 o'clock. They're going to be talking about Nike. They're going to be talking about Costco. Nike's up 1.7 percent ahead of their numbers this morning. Costco. Up about two-thirds percent. Nike, let's take a look real quick as we wrap up the program. Nike, looking for about a $9 move expected on their numbers. Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. S&P's up 49. Stay tuned. We got Basil up next. Live programming coming up after that. Have a great Thursday, everybody.